Daily jolt of Java may bring longer life. Two large studies boost potential benefits of coffee, and one looked at consumption in all races. Here's news to perk up your day, drinking coffee might help you live a little longer. Two new studies suggest. Researchers found that daily coffee drinkers were up to 18% less likely to die over the next 10 to 16 years, versus non-drinkers. The findings, based on over 700,000 middle-aged and older adults, add to the growing list of benefits linked to moderate coffee drinking. Studies have already tied the habit to lower risks of various diseases, from heart disease and type 2 diabetes, to liver cancer, to neurological diseases like Parkinson's and multiple sclerosis. None of those studies prove coffee, per se provides the benefit, and it's unlikely that doctors will start recommending coffee as some sort of elixir, according to Veronica Satiawan, the senior researcher on one of the studies. But if you've always been a coffee drinker, she said, there's no reason to stop. That runs counter to the common belief that coffee drinking is a bad habit, a belief the evidence does not bear out, according to Satiawan. Moderate coffee consumption can be incorporated into a healthy lifestyle, said Satiawan. She's an associate professor of preventive medicine at the University of Southern California's Keck School of Medicine. For their study, Satiawan and colleagues used data on nearly 186,000 middle-aged and older Americans of all races. That's important, Satiawan said because past studies on coffee and lifespan have mainly included white people. At the study's start, in the 1990s, people reported on their diet and lifestyle habits, including coffee drinking. During the next decade, more than 58,000 study participants died. It turned out that coffee drinkers had somewhat better survival odds. Those who downed one to three cups a day were 12 to 18 percent less likely to die versus non-drinkers, and the pattern was consistent across racial groups, including whites, blacks, Latinos and Japanese Americans, the study found. According to Satiawan, that bolsters the theory that coffee, itself, might have some beneficial biological effects. She noted that Americans of different races tend to differ in lifestyle habits education and other factors, yet coffee consumption was consistently linked to better survival, regardless of race. The second study had similar findings. This study included more than 520,000 Europeans. During the investigation, nearly 42,000 died. People who drank about three cups of coffee, 23 to 29 ounces, per day were 7% to 12% less likely to die over the next 16 years compared with non-drinkers, and they had a 40% to 59% lower risk of dying from digestive disorders, such as liver disease. The researchers said that finding makes sense. Past studies have hinted that coffee might support liver function, and coffee drinkers in this study typically had lower levels of certain proteins that can signal problems with the liver. Both studies were published online in the July 11th issue of the Annals of Internal Medicine. Still, neither study proved that coffee can extend a person's life, according to an editorial published with the findings. We are not in a position to recommend people drink coffee for health benefits, said Drive. Elise O'Gwaller, one of the editorial's authors. There are also potential downsides to coffee, noted Gwaller a professor at Johns Hopkins University in Baltimore. He said that drinking more than 400 milligrams of caffeine a day, equivalent to four to five cups of coffee, can cause symptoms such as dizziness and a spike in heart rate. And some people, such as pregnant women and teenagers, should have stricter caffeine limits. Plus, Gwaller said, if people load their coffee with cream and sugar, that adds calories and unhealthy fats. That said, he agreed with Satina Wan's take. We can reassure moderate coffee drinkers that they can continue. Gwaller said, if coffee does help ward off certain health problems, it's not clear why. It contains a mix of antioxidants, Satina Wan noted, but no one knows if they deserve the credit. It's not clear if caffeine has a role, either. In the U.S. study, people who drank decaf also had a lower death risk. Satiawan said, even if coffee has specific benefits, 
though, it would not be a magic bullet, obviously, Satya Wan said, overall lifestyle, physical activity, diet, not smoking, is important. Coffee drinkers live longer, perhaps, drinking three cups of coffee a day may help you live longer, according to a study of almost half a million people from 10 European countries. The research, published in the journal The Annals of Internal Medicine, suggests an extra cup of coffee could lengthen a person's lifespan, even if it is decaffeinated. But skeptical experts point out it is impossible to say for sure that it is the coffee that is having a protective effect, rather than say, a more healthy lifestyle than coffee drinkers. They say there is no need to reach for that extra cup of coffee just yet, drinking three cups of coffee a day may help you live longer, according to a study of almost half a million people from 10 European countries. The research, published in the journal The Annals of Internal Medicine, suggests an extra cup of coffee could lengthen a person's lifespan, even if it is decaffeinated. But skeptical experts point out it is impossible to say for sure that it is the coffee that is having a protective effect, rather than say, a more healthy lifestyle than coffee drinkers. They say there is no need to reach for that extra cup of coffee just yet. Researchers from the International Agency for Research on Cancer and Imperial College London say they have found that drinking more coffee is linked to a lower risk of death, particularly for heart diseases and diseases of the gut. They came to their conclusions after analyzing data of healthy people over the age of 35 and 10 new countries. They asked them once at the beginning of the study how much coffee they tended to drink and then looked at deaths over an average of 16 years. Professor Sir David Spiegel, Halden, from the University of Cambridge, analyzes the public understanding of risk and says that if the estimated reductions in death really were down to coffee, then an extra cup of coffee every day would extend the life of a man by around three months and a woman by around a month on average. But despite the sheer scale of the study, it is by no means perfect and cannot prove that coffee beans are the magic ingredient. Frustratingly for coffee beans, the findings really are not as clear-cut as they might first seem. That is because the study could not take every factor into account, clouding how certain one can be about coffee's effects. For example, it did not look at how much coffee drinkers earn in comparison with non-coffee drinkers. It might be that people who can afford three cups of coffee a day are richer, and that extra money, in some way, helps protect their health. It might be that people who drank three cups of coffee a day spent more time socializing and that in turn may have boosted their well-being. And even if they were to be certain it was the coffee that was responsible, not every risk improved. The researchers found higher coffee drinking was linked to a higher rate of ovarian cancer in women. For example, and although the paper looked at a lot of people, the researchers excluded anyone who had diabetes, heart attacks or strokes at the beginning of the study. So it do SG tell us much about the risks or benefits of drinking coffee if people are unwell. It is also possible some of those people became unwell while having their regular brews. Previous studies have shown conflicting and often contradictory results. For many people, Experience suggests that drinks containing caffeine can temporarily make us feel more alert, but caffeine affects some people more than others, and the effects can vary from person to person. NHS experts have not set limits for coffee in the general population but they do say that pregnant women should avoid drinking more than 200 mg of caffeine a day. They say this is because coffee might increase the chance of the baby being born too small. Too much caffeine may also increase the risk of miscarriage. And, of course, caffeine is not just found in coffee. The 200 mg caffeine limit could be reached by having two mugs of tea and a can of cola, for example, or two cups of instant coffee. There was also recently the case of a U.S. teen who, it has thought, may have died from 
drinking too many caffeinated drinks too quickly. The most rigorous scientific way to be certain that coffee could make you live longer would be to force thousands of people all over the world to drink it regularly while preventing many thousands of otherwise similar people from ever drinking coffee. Scientists would then have to monitor every other aspect of their life, what else they ate and drank, how much they burned, how much exercise they did, for example. That is a study that is never likely to take place. So for now, some experts say, instead of putting all your bets on coffee being good for you, you could instead do something that has been proven to extend life. Take a brisk, 20-minute walk to the nearest coffee shop, whether you order a cup or not.